need to help boys and men, rather than just seeing this as a problem with the boys and men, that there's something wrong with them, and to individualize it. I fear that on, honestly, this is across the political spectrum in different ways, but there's a lot of fingers being wagged at young boys and men, but not many helping hands being extended. And I, I really do feel we can be passionate about women's rights and opportunities, but deeply compassionate about the situation that many of our boys and men find themselves in. One of the reasons why there are so many facts in the book is to just level the ground and make people feel like, yeah, I thought there was something here, and yeah, here's the evidence for it. There's a general sense among a lot of people that there are struggles that boys and men are having now, but they don't necessarily have the facts to back it up or the solutions to try and tackle it. So in that sense, it was kind of a grounding book, and if I'm being honest, it was about a permission book. It's a permission to have this conversation in good faith without in any way giving up any prior commitments to the rights and opportunities of, of women and girls. There are ways in which men and women are different, and it's important to acknowledge those differences as you go out into the world. It is not that those differences translate into any kind of inequality, it's not that one is better than the other, but I think it's naive to send our daughters or sons out into the world with a view that we are all exactly the same, and actually to celebrate some of the differences between us and some of the magic that honestly exists in the differences between men and women. And so I think an understanding of their differences is hugely important. The first piece of advice I have for parents, especially if they have sons, is, is a thing not to do, which is not to embrace the idea of toxic masculinity or to in any way, even if you don't use the term, to believe that there's something kind of intrinsically wrong with boys that's different to girls, and that it's a question of making them somehow less than. And if we could just make them less masculine, that would be the problem, rather than instead helping them grow as boys into men, learning to mature, learning how to express their differences appropriately. I would also really say to parents that they should recognize boys are somewhat more physical than girls. You know, when I, I have three sons, and one piece of advice from another parent who also had sons was, boys are like dogs. You just need to run them out twice a day. This is back in the UK, I should say. And that's, that's not the extent of it, but there is some truth to that. And so recognizing that, whatever you want to call it, rumbunctiousness, physicality, I think is hugely important. The third thing I would say is that Educational excellence is not a feminine pursuit, that we should really recognize it and honor it in boys too. But very often that will mean having to depart from a kind of traditional educational script. One of my biggest regrets is sort of trying to force my own boys through an education system that wasn't really very well designed for them, see how the boys are struggling, and want to help them. See that there are still some obstacles facing women and girls, want to do something about that too. And so the sort of straightforwardness that most people approach these problems is in stark contrast to what we see at the kind of stratospheric level. There are real problems facing many boys and men, especially working class boys and men and black boys and men in education, labor market and in family life, and that we should be looking to specific solutions for them. I mentioned a number of solutions in the book, but for example, a massive recruitment drive of male teachers, the fact that we have fewer and fewer men teaching in our classrooms strikes me as reaching close to crisis point. Huge investments in vocational education and training which really help boys and men. Help for men to move into the growing professions, many of which are female dominated, like in health and education and so on. Let's have some targeted subsidies and scholarships to help dislocated men move into those professions and a strong emphasis on fatherhood. Let's think about paid leave for fathers, flexible working for fathers, so that we don't make the mistake of thinking that family policy is women's policy, but rather it's genuinely equally about mothers and fathers. So I think there's a lot we can do to reform the child support system, to give more rights to fathers in terms of access to paid leave and so on. I, I actually do think that creating more spaces, institutions that are specifically targeted at men on campuses and elsewhere is a good thing. I think to the extent that the reasons why men might be struggling in college or elsewhere are somewhat specific to being men, that's perfectly appropriate to have services that suit them in just the same way that you would have women's centers to help women with the specific problems that, that they are having. If we were to see a coalition for boys and men in education 
How about a cross-party caucus, congressional caucus, looking at issues facing boys and men, etc.? How about an office of gender equality that actually does look at gender inequality both ways? I think if, there, if I'm seeing groups and institutions that are able to tackle this problem, highlight some of the statistics, suggest some solutions in a good faith, in a fairly boring way, honestly, if I'm being completely honest about this, success will be when the problems of boys and men are taken seriously, but in a straightforward way. That these are real problems that we should straightforwardly address and we've taken it out of the culture war to some extent. As a parent, one of the things I learned was that when you are really furious with your children, that a really good thing to do is take 10 deep breaths. Sometimes walk away and just take 10 deep breaths, then re-engage with the child. Amazing advice. I have to tell you, it made me a much better father when I started doing that. And I, I think we need the equivalent in politics now. I was thinking like, if we could all take 10 deep breaths, before we engage in this debate, it would really help. Let's take some of the heat out of it and have a good faith discussion about these real problems. So the real success for me will be not in a sense to have a new politics of boys and men, but rather depoliticizing some of these issues in such a way that people can just address them without looking over either their right or their left shoulder the whole time.